This lecture will include an introduction to anatomy and physiology, directional terms, regional terms, and planes and cavities. As you can see, we have quite a few objectives for lab number one. Keep in mind that spelling counts on your lab exam, so if you are quote unquote not a good speller, please start practicing sooner rather than later. So, since we have so many objectives, let's get started. This is an A&P course, so anatomy would be the study of structures of an organism and the parts that make up that organism, while physiology is the study of how those structures function within our bodies. Okay? So we can look at a heart, we can look at the vessels, the chambers, the surface of the heart, things like that. We can even look at the heart microscopically. All that is anatomy. When we start talking about how the heart functions, we have moved into physiology. The human body is very organized. We have levels of organization starting at the chemical level. Um, everything on the planet and in the universe is made up of atoms, carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, nitrogens, everything like that. We start putting those together and we can create molecules, like this phospholipid molecule. Okay? We put multiple molecules together and eventually we start creating organelles like cell membranes, ribosomes, mitochondria, all those types of things you're familiar with. Once we start putting enough organelles together, we can finally create a cell. Now the cell is the basic unit of life. If you are a living organism, you have at least one cell. When we start putting multiple cell types together, we can finally create a tissue. Your entire body is made up of four different types of tissues. We have epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. When you start putting multiple tissue types together, we finally create organs. These are things like your esophagus, your heart, your liver, your lungs. Each has one or just a few very specific functions that it carries out for us. When organs start coordinating with each other to perform broader functions, we have now created organ systems like your digestive system, your respiratory system, your endocrine system. When we put all 11 organ systems together, we finally create an organism or a good old human being. Now, anatomical position. Anytime we talk about a patient, um, a model, an image, anything like that in your a &P courses, you are always going to want to refer to the model, the image, the patient as if they were in anatomical position, even if they're not. So anatomical position is our common frame of reference. Okay. Um, the image that you see, this woman is standing upright in anatomical position. She has her feet shoulder width apart, her toes are facing forward, her arms are down by her sides, palms facing outwards or forwards, and she is looking straight ahead. Now again, even if she were curled up on the floor in the fetal position, we would talk about her body parts and her body regions as if she were still in anatomical position. Last but not least, anytime we talk about lefts and rights, we are talking about our patient, our model, or our image. Their left and right, so this would be the right side, this would be the left side. It's not our own left and right. Okay. Now, directional terms. We can describe the relationship of one body part to another. So anytime we use these terms, we are talking about two different body parts and we are comparing their locations. And these all come in pairs. So you have anterior and posterior. Okay. If you prefer the term ventral, it's the same thing as anterior. If you prefer the term dorsal, it's the same thing as posterior. Okay. I tend to interchange these. Sometimes I'll say anterior, sometimes I'll say ventral. Sometimes I'll say posterior, sometimes I'll say dorsal. Okay, so either of these terms are correct for anything referring to the back side of the body. Either one of these terms are correct when referring to the front of the body. So your belly button is on the anterior surface of your body. Your spinal cord is on the dorsal aspect. It's in your back, right? It's your backbone in your back. Okay. 
Now, superior and inferior. Again, we have another subset. Cranial is the same as superior. Caudal is the same thing as inferior. So when we use superior cranial, we're meaning towards your head. Okay? Inferior or caudal refers to towards your tail. We prefer to use these terms when we are talking about regions on your head, your neck, or your trunk exclusively. Notice that we did not include your arms and your legs here. Okay? Or if we are talking about structures or regions on your arms and legs, we instead use the terms proximal and distal. So proximal refers to something being closer to the point of origin. Distal refers to it being more distant or more further away from that point of origin. So when we keep saying point of origin, what do we mean? It's really an attachment point where your arms attach to your body, okay, where your legs attach to your body. That's where they would originate. Okay. Our next set is medial and lateral. Okay, so anything that is closer to your midline or the middle of your body would be medial. Anything that is further away from that midline out towards your sides would be referred to as lateral. Last but not least, superficial refers to structures that are closer to the surface of your body, while deep structures refer to those that are further away from the surface or they are quote unquote deep down inside your body. Okay. Again, just a refresher, what all these terms mean. We have some examples for you to look over. Um, and then this nice little diagram really shows you proximal versus distal, medial, lateral, so forth and so on. Okay, so please take a look at this for a second. Pause the video if you need to. Feel free to write down these examples, whatever you need. When you're ready to move on, restart your video. All right, so we have some practice. Okay. Go ahead, pause the video, work on these on your own, use the terms that we just discussed. When you've done all 15 of these, when you've done the other 14 of them, um, come back, restart the video, let's check your work, let's make sure we're all on the same page. So go ahead, pause your video. When you're ready, go ahead and restart it and let's check your work. Okay. Let's check your work. Please make sure you've done these on your own before you check your work. Don't just fill in the blanks. You know you're not going to learn anything that way. Okay, so always make sure you're doing your own work first. All right, so my wrist is blank to my elbow. Okay, because this is an arm uh, example, uh, our best option is distal. Your wrist is farther away from your elbow. Okay. Um, compared to that point of origin, which again is usually referred to as your shoulder region. Okay? So your wrist is farther away from your elbow compared to your shoulder. Now, your shoulder to your elbow. That one would be more proximal. Okay? So our shoulder is closer to our point of origin okay? compared to your elbow. Your elbow is farther down. Your navel compared to your spine. Okay. You may decide on more than one answer here. Your navel um, is anterior to your spine. That would be just fine as uh, well as being more superficial to your spine. Um, you know, your navel is a pretty superficial structure. You can, you know, poke your belly button. Your spine is, you know, you can run your finger along your spine, but you could also say, oh, well, you know, my, my spine is inside of my body. I wouldn't argue with that, so I think either one of these terms would be appropriate here. The breastbone is blank to the shoulder socket, okay, and that would be medial. Your breastbone runs right down the middle of your chest compared to your shoulder socket. Skin is blank compared to the heart and lungs. That would be superficial, okay, and this is more towards the surface compared to your heart and lungs. The head is blank to the neck. Our best option here is superior. Um, the mouth is blank to the nose, so your mouth is inferior to your nose. That's our best option there. The spine is blank to the breastbone. Um, again, if you want to go really deep into it, you could say your spine is either posterior, um, or again, if you prefer the term dorsal, that'd be fine as well. And just want to say my spine is on my back. 
compared to my breastbone which would be on the front and then posterior would work if you want to go a little bit quote unquote deeper your spine again could be deep inside your body um, it could be deeper to your breastbone again I wouldn't really argue with either one of those your lungs are blank to your rib cage that one needs to be deep your lungs sit behind your rib cage or deeper down into your body than your rib cage the fingers are blank to the wrist your fingers would be distal to your wrist the eyes are blank to the nose okay we could say that our eyes are lateral compared to our nose they sit closer to the sides of our head or you could just say that your eyes are superior to your nose and that would work as well the ears are blank to the mouth and the ears sit over on the sides of your head your mouth runs more along your midline the ankle is blank to the knee, your ankle is distal to your knee, your ankle is farther away from your hip area, that point of origin compared to the knee. The waist is blank to the neck, that would be inferior, and the heart is blank to the rib cage, that would be deep. Okay, So hopefully you got at least most of those. Um, students usually do pretty well. If they're going to miss one or two it's usually going to be the distal and the proximal so if you did miss anything that was distal and proximal just make sure you flip back a slide or two make sure you're reading through some examples really reading through those definitions um, to really nail those down okay all right now we're going to do regional terms so your body can be divided into regions. We tend to have two major categories, your axial and your appendicular region. Um, these categories will come back up when we talk about your skeletal system. So those, those words will be familiar to you. Your axial region is your head, your neck, and your trunk. While your appendicular region is your upper and your lower appendages, also known as your arms and your legs. And then we subdivide into smaller and smaller regions. And so let us take a look. Here we go. So you have a list, okay, that has many of these words in them, okay? Thoracic, palmar, inguinal, popliteal. You have quite a few in your chart, okay? There could be more words on this image that you can see right now and our second image. There could be more words on here than what is in your list. Your exam comes from your list. Okay, so if your list does not include the word pollux, do not waste your time studying the region pollux. Seem cruel. If it's not on your lab list, do not study anything extra. Okay. So there is a blank image in your notes. Okay. You should take your blank image in your lab list. Okay. In this picture that's labeled and our previous picture that are already labeled. And you should be able to do yourself a little bit of practicing. Okay. So feel free to pause the video if you'd like to go ahead and do that practicing on your own. If you'd like to come back to that practicing, let's go ahead and move forward. Okay.